All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is Gary Dean, DetailJuice.com. Now, I shot a video uh, recently where I'm showing you guys how to do some paint correction. The problem with the video that you're about to see is that I didn't show you how to identify defects. I didn't show you how to go from one section pass, identify what happen during that pass what you were able to remove as far as defects go and then I also didn't show you how to decide whether or not you want to hit it again so I guess since I made some notes in my phone I'll go ahead and run you through um, what I had missed on the video before you see it now the video that I shot is on an 85 c10 pickup truck that has single stage paint very cheap crappy crappy paint that's been on there for what seems to be years uh it's my truck i intend on getting it painted soon so i'm doing some demos on it just to mess around with it and see what's going on um just so you guys know i have been working on new polishes a brand new compound and new finishing polish that not only work better but also I think I got my cost down a little bit, which is going to help everybody out. Um, so, infinite cut and infinite finish in the future. I don't know if it's the near future. I don't know if it's the distant future. We'll st we're still working on uh, the new polishes, but they are in the works. So, uh, hopefully I'll have better polishes. But, I don't really need better polishes. They're already fantastic. But we are trying to, we always are striving to improve upon the previous version, but I'm trying to get my cost down now, which is kind of where I'm at. Um, so, I made some notes. First of all, when it comes to paint correction, if you're concerned about uh, your level of experience and the fact that you may or may not get the best end result, don't worry about that does not matter if you have no experience or a ton of experience to get great results. Um, now there are tricks of the trade, there are things that you know with experience you can improve upon, you can go faster, uh, you can get a better end result, but for all intents and purposes with a dual action polisher that I'm going to show you in this video and um, you know the buff and shine pads, backing plate and my polishes, you can get a phenomenal result with very little effort and with very little experience uh, from the past. So, um, I just wanna say that nowadays, you don't need more than two steps, generally, to get a fantastic finish with awesome cut. Um, and what I mean by that is our compounds are cutting better and they're leaving a better finish behind that you don't have to chase with a polish to remove the compounding haze as much and refine the finish. So a lot of the compounds today, like my Infinite Cut, will cut really deep and well, but they will also leave a great finish so that Infinite Finish can take care of any and everything that's left and glossify everything, bring out the depth uh, and the shine in the uh, paint that you're working on. So two steps is all that's really needed. A uh, good solid compounding step and then a good solid polishing step and then you can go into your uh, protection after that. Uh, the next thing is, I mentioned a little bit in the video, but you need to use between speed 5 and 6 to cut. You want to use between 3 and 4 uh, on your dial on the machine uh, for polishing. You also want to use 3 to 4 for applying sealants, waxes, or whatever you're applying. My coatings are applied by a machine, so three to four on your machine is what you'd apply the coatings with as well from my lineup. Um, it's really important also, after every section pass you do, and in the video you'll see, my section pass is defined as three passes. So one up and down, 50% overlapping, all the way back so one up and down overlapping back and forth and then one more up and down 
that's what I consider a section pass. You don't want to overwork your polishes. You don't want to underwork your polishes. So medium pressure, about 25 pounds of pressure on the surface, making sure the pad is always as flat as possible. Then, once you've gotten your section pass out of the way in a two by two section, you're gonna wipe off with a microfiber towel, use some infinite use detail juice if you're using another polish that doesn't come right off, um, and then inspect your paint with an LED flashlight. Inspect your paint. Um, you always also, which I didn't do in the video, wanna use masking tape. So you wanna cut the panel in half with the masking tape, polish one side, pull the tape, then you can see your results in the light side by side with a definitive line uh, so that you can see the correction or the gloss uh, benefit that was had by that section pass and or many other ones depending on how your gut feels uh, is how far you'll go. Generally with the DA, two cutting passes get you really good work done with a, with a good quality compound, but it's all about how good you feel about proceeding. You can cut either until the scratches are gone or your paint's gone. It's up to you. My, a good rule of thumb using a dual action polisher is don't go over three cutting passes before you call it a day on that section, or I should say that part of the job, and then go into your polishing. Polishing is a lighter polish or a lighter solution uh, as far as abrasives go, and you don't have as much worry to burn your paint or whatever. But with the dual action polisher over a rotary, you really don't, it's a very safe machine to use. I would not feel intimidated if I were you with a dual action polisher. Like I mentioned in the video, um, Harbor Freight, 60 bucks, can't go wrong, and that's all that I use. All right. Um, Trust your gut is important, I just mentioned that. So if you, get, if you start polishing, uh, or compounding I should say, and you feel like you shouldn't do it again, don't do it again. It's pretty easy. Um, trust your gut. That's very important when you're polishing, compounding, wet sanding, all of that. If you feel like you shouldn't, you probably shouldn't. That's the bottom line there. Um, two more things. You gotta take your time and do it right. The biggest hassle with paint correction is not actually doing it. It is that it takes time to get it right. Does it take 50, 60 hours? I think that's the biggest crock of bullshit on the internet. I don't feel like anybody needs a $60 detail. Um, take your time, do it right, trust your gut. But here's the bottom line, and this is all I'm gonna say for this video. I am going to do more of these videos, but I just, I had an opportunity to shoot it yesterday, so I did. Perfection is not reality, period. Chasing every swirl and scratch is gonna make you lose your mind, and as soon as you wash, as soon as you use the vehicle, it's gonna go back to swirled up in a matter of time and you're gonna to have to do it all over again. All you can hope to do is take care and put in the effort on your maintenance washes where you're not installing too many more swirls at a time, where that, that length of time from the time you correct it to the time that you need to recorrect it is longer. You wanna make sure you do everything you can to not damage the paint in your maintenance, but Bottom line is, perfection is not reality. And some of these guys on the internet, well, first of all, they're not making any real money in detailing if they're spending 50, 60 hours uh, correcting cars. That's not necessarily the truth because they can convince some people to pay them what they want. The problem is, it's not reality to be busy, busy, busy as a full-time job would be with those kinds of jobs. They're not as abundant as other jobs. So bottom line is, I'm speaking directly to the enthusiast now that wants to correct their paint. Go get a Harbor Freight DA 
order a backing plate from me, order some pads from me, and my Infinite Cut and Infinite Finish, you will have everything that you need to get the job done on your own, or you can call me, we could talk about it, you could pay me to detail your car if you want, uh, but you really could do it yourself. If you've got a little bit of time and a little bit of uh, elbow grease to put in and a little bit of effort. So without further ado, I will do more videos on this subject. This was a quick video I shot because I wanted to get this particular content on my YouTube channel because I've been asked a hundred times uh, in the past few months about this. So uh, without further ado, here we go. Hey guys, it's Gary Dean, DetailJuice.com. I'm going to show you real quick. It's not complicated to do your own paint correction. What I've got here is a about a three-year-old Harbor Freight dual action polisher. I have a Buff and Shine five inch polishing backing plate. Uh, I also have a Buff and Shine uh, blue cutting pad. With that, I also have Infinite Finish from DetailJuice.com. Just gonna put a little bit of Infinite Finish on the surface here. And if you'll notice, the hood of this 1985 C10 pickup truck is all oxidized. It's got, I have no clue what that is, uh, but it is not clear and fantastic. Now if you'll notice, I put the uh, cord over my shoulder. I do sell the cord control clip that I designed uh, several years ago. I don't have one made uh, currently here at my house. So I'm not wearing one, but it does clip onto the back of your shirt. Probably should do that, use that for the demo, but I'm not gonna bother with that. I wanna show you how simple and effective just a basic polisher, uh, $60 from Harbor Freight, a uh, $25 backing plate, and a $15 pad. I mean, depending on where you buy them. I sell the backing plate for 25, the pad for 15. You could probably get them cheaper, but at DetailJuice.com you can find everything you need and nothing that you don't. So anyway, I'm just going to take a little section right here. I'm going to put this thing on speed five. I'm going to offer medium pressure, about 25 pounds of pressure. So imagine putting a 25 pound sack of potatoes on top of this thing. That's about what we're going to do here with some infinite finish. Nothing fancy. A section pass, in my opinion, is a two by two section. Uh, and you're going to do three passes for a section pass. Here we go. Spread it out. Now, give it that 25 pounds of pressure. I did two passes. Perfect example. I'm so glad, believe it or not, that this didn't work out to exactly what I was trying to do. Now, I did infinite finish. And you can notice, if you just look at the finish here where I did polish and here where I didn't polish, you'll notice that this is still oxidized, this is semi-glossy. Now what I'm trying to get at with this particular video is, you always wanna use the least, least aggressive method first. That's the best rule of thumb when you're doing paint correction. A dual action polisher does not have any forced rotation, so it's safer than a rotary polisher. You wanna start with this guy. In fact, for, for all intents and purposes, this is all that I use about 98% of the time. You can get more work done with this than pretty much any other polisher on the planet because this, the torque that this provides really cuts well, it polishes well, it does a lot of work. Now other polishers that are way more expensive than this, yes, 
The larger throw gives you more cut. In theory, it works better. Most people want clean and shiny, and for all intents and purposes, you can get a great job cutting and a fantastic job finishing with this polisher. And those who tell you that this is not enough really don't understand the business of detailing. And that's kind of what I'm trying to show you today. Infinite cut now. Now, the whole point of what I was trying to get at is, you try the least aggressive method first. If that doesn't yield the results that you need, you step it up a bit. But you generally don't want to go straight to the most aggressive stuff, even after the light stuff. So in this case, I would skip to the my Evo All-in-One, which is the next step in aggressiveness before you get to Infinite Cut. But because I know that Infinite Cut is the actual product I need, that's where I'm going to switch to. Um, well, you got to take off the deal there. Now, if I'm going backwards, I'm okay with just adding Infinite Cut to the pad. Uh, but if you were, if you're not going backwards, if you're trying to get less aggressive, if you're going the other way, I would never use Infinite Cut and then put Infinite Finish on here. I'd switch to a different pad or clean this pad. So since I'm going in reverse, I don't mind adding abrasive to the situation. I just don't want to go the other way, like I mentioned. So now what I'm going to do is spread it around a bit. I'm going to town. I'm also going to speed it up to six. Polisher. Here we go. overlapping passes at 25 pounds of down force. Medium speed on speed 5 to 6. That'll change your life. That'll make everything look better. Wipe off your work to reveal what's underneath. And there you have it. You can clearly tell from this angle that all of this is very oxidized still. That's all glossy. That's the line that I didn't polish. That's oxidized. So now, just real quick, since you can see pretty well that this is all oxidized right here. I'm going to go ahead and polish that. You can see the difference between this and that. It's pretty obvious. So now, if I can get my fantastic... Uh, camera girl to come over here and hold the camera again. More infinite cut. Normally to show your work you do a 50-50 with masking tape. Normally I'd put it there. I don't have any with me today. And I really don't care. I'm just showing you guys how easy it is for the average Joe to get out here and make some things happen.
Now this is just super duper cheap, very inexpensive single stage paint that somebody painted on this vehicle before I took possession. I am going to have it repainted, but I got a few things to try uh, just to do some testing on it before I have it painted in the next couple weeks. But there you go. It's not rocket science getting some real work done on your own with the Harbor Freight DA and some infinite cut and infinite finish. Now you can notice the intense gloss you get that you didn't have before. And now both of these sides of this body line look the same. So that's where I'm at. It does not take a professional detailer to get professional looking results. I make money as a detailer because my clients maybe they don't know as much as I do about how to get things done and the processes and that kind of thing. But the reality is it's not because they can't do it themselves. Most of my clients are car guys. They know cars, they love cars, they understand paint and that kind of thing. Maybe not the technical details, but I can tell you that technical detailers, technical details are not where the money's at. It is in the real world uh, experience that you have and how products work in the real world and I can tell you that any average Joe with any kind of knowledge about well man stuff can polish a car and get great results on his own it does not take a paint correction specialist to get awesome results on your paint by yourself. You just don't have to be one that has had years and years of experience with the Harbor Freight DA, the right backing plate, pad, and polish combination. You can get phenomenal results at home with no problem at all. Uh, if you've got questions for me, I'd be more than happy to help you. Uh, I highly recommend that you attempt it yourself. Uh, I can definitely help you with the pads, the backing plate, and the polishes that you need to get it all done. But when it comes right down to the fact of the matter is the dual action polisher that oscillates, that jiggles instead of force rotation, it's pretty safe. Now if you stood on top of it with a heavy duty compounding pad and polish combo, there's a chance you could burn through the paint, but there's not as big a deal or chance of that happening as one would think or that the internet would suggest. All you've got to do is take your time and listen to my direction and you will do amazing at correcting your own finish. Or you can pay someone hundreds if not thousands of dollars to get it done for you. The biggest benefit that I'm trying to tell you about is if you don't have time, I get it. You don't want to mess with it, I get it. I'm here, 813-846-4406, I'll polish your car for you, no problem. But if you're one of those people that wants to do it themselves, you absolutely can with no problem. I'll help you, all you've got to do is call, check out Gary Dean's Detail Juice Nation, it's a group on Facebook where we only talk about my products, my processes and what I've got going on. Um, I don't know that you'll find more information uh, on the planet or the internet, whatever, than there is in my group about paint correction, general detailing, and whatever else you need to know. Just text me directly, give me a call, message me on Facebook, whatever. Find me on Instagram at, at gary.dean.35. I'll help you out with whatever I can. Again, super simple results in very little time. I got the oxidation removed, the gloss returned. See how it's all oxidized and now it's glossy down here. And all I did was just one section pass with uh, infinite cut. So thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate your trust and support. Um, if I can do anything for you to help you in your detailing endeavors, please give me a call 813-846-4406. Have a great day. Have a great day guys. I appreciate your time.